So I wanted to bring up something else which isn't so much fun. It's not like morphine Fred talking about poo and stuff. It's a lot more serious, I guess. But um, I've just come to some realizations recently and found out some information just how much psychological, like a ripple of psychological trauma came out of this um, accident. And it wasn't me, it was um, Lou. It was my mum, it was my family, it was probably a lot of you guys in Morzine and, and my other friends. But um, I spoke to my mum last night on Skype and she told me last night that she basically looked at a message on her phone and it was from Lou that um, I'd had an accident and it was very serious. And she started shaking and like crying and basically having a, a panic attack like because she was so shocked. And... There's another bit which I'm going to add um, about Lou's sort of journey and her sort of trauma that she suffered. But um, yeah, I just kind of didn't really, uh, you know, I've been, everyone's been focusing on me. I've been sort of focusing on me and I didn't really, you know, realise how much it affected other people. And I've just learned this recently and I think it's really important to share that when things like this happen, it's... Um, it hurts a lot of people, not just the sort of injured guy that's in the chair, like getting all the attention, getting all the the love, all the messages. There's actually a like a much broader circle of um, hurt and trauma that needs to be, I don't know, just needs to be talked about and recognised and not ignored. And sort of people, people are kind of a bit um, reluctant to tell me because they're like, oh, you know, I like... I don't want to bring you down, like, but but it's it's important, like, if you if you if you, if you feel hurt and you feel like um, sad that things have happened to me because you care about me, I'd like to, to to know about that, you know. And I've only just found these things out recently. Also, wanted to give a big, big, huge kind of public thank you to my sister Penny because um, I got told a story last night, which was basically my mum was unconsolable she was thinking the worst worrying about me and my dad couldn't handle it well not saying couldn't handle it but he just called my sister and my sister's very level-headed very um sensible and she sorted everything out so she calmed my mum down she just said meet us at the airport at this time and paid for everything flew my family over uh, so my sister, my nephew, my mum and my dad and then my niece joined the, ne the next day. So within 24 hours, I had my family next to me and I, it just never really occurred to me like how that process happened and how I just wanted to say a big thank you publicly to my sister, Penny. Thank you very much. You're an absolute legend. On a little side note, which is really funny, my mum's got this sort of black kind of fur coat thing and that she came in. And um, I think I might have taken a picture on Skype, so, so I'll try and include that. But she came in with this coat over her arm, and I was like, oh, you've brought Frank with you. Because I thought it was my cat. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's quite funny. But um, yeah, just the fact that I had so much support, especially from Lou. Um, a, lot of people, a lot of focus has been put on me, but um, I just want everyone to know I'm okay, I'm good. I'm being very, very, very well looked after here. Um, I'm rehabilitating myself and I'm actually really enjoying it. Like I say, it's, uh, it's, it's weird, but I'm actually, this is one of the happiest times of my life. It's, um, I, I've always enjoyed a challenge and yeah, like learning to live in a wheelchair is, is a challenge and, it, and it's quite cool. I, I really enjoy it. So no one has to feel bad for me. No one has to feel sorry for me. Um, and people need to recognize that other people have suffered a lot. It's only just occurred to me, um, and I don't know if it's really sort of occurred to anyone else, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd mention it. Um, Lou shared something with me today which um, was important. My parents were here, then her mum was here, her mum left yesterday, and she confided in me that she just felt a bit deflated and just like she had been holding, she'd been holding it strong 
all this time and and, and I, I she was been a bit funny all day and I just asked her and she, finally she broke down and and told me why and and basically um I didn't even think like it, it, I've been so selfish what happened was so she gets this phone call something's happened to Fred it's really serious. Um, you need to get down to Annecy. You have a phone call like that, like your mind races. You, you think crazy thoughts, and you you know, and I just put myself in her shoes, and it made me really sad because she got to the hospital. They didn't speak English. She doesn't speak French that well. She couldn't understand. All they said was, it's very serious. He's going to go in for an operation now. She saw me for about... I don't have, I don't have any recollection of this. Apparently, I spoke to her on the phone. Um, and then she heard me like vomiting, and then the phone went dead. She was asking for Fred. Obviously, my first name is Peter, so they didn't even know if, if she was the right person. Eventually, she found me, spent about five minutes with me before I went for an operation that was six hours long. They put her in a waiting room, and then they took her out of the waiting room. They brought another family in the waiting room. Then apparently all the family members left the waiting room in tears. Then they put her back in the waiting room. And just... That must have been horrible, man. Like, can you imagine... I couldn't imagine if that was me, like, and someone had said that that had happened to Lou, like, um, you know, your loved one, like the most important person to you in the whole world, you, you can't understand what they're saying, you don't know if they're going to live or die, you know, like, you don't know what the extent of their injuries, you don't know anything, she, she was, and I'm and all anyone's worried about is me. And no one's given us a thought to how Lou feels. And She's been through a lot. And I have been so naive to it. It's gone over my head. I, I've just been like, oh, thanks, Lou. You, you're such a hero. You're here every day for me. You know, like, you, you know, you're such a thank. Oh, I couldn't do this without you thanking her but without really understanding the true nature of what she went through and if, if you could put yourself in the situation where someone that you cared about very very deeply was injured and obviously look at me I'm fine I'm cool like I might have to spend some time in a wheelchair maybe the rest of my life in a wheelchair but I, I'm I'm good but she didn't know that she didn't know if I was going to be a vegetable. She didn't know if I was going to survive. She didn't know anything like that. And um, I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to. Oh, I don't know, man. I just didn't know. I'd been naive to certain things about how much she's gone through and um, she really is a hero. My mum didn't know what happened, like my, Lou didn't really know what to say to my mum, like there's been an accident, like it's serious, I don't really know what's happening and then obviously by the time I'd sort of woken up out of the hospital, like my family members were surrounding me because they didn't know if I was gonna live or die, you know, like, and, and obviously I appreciate all that they went through and, and the fact that they turned up at a moment's notice. I'm incredibly, incredibly fortunate that I've had such support around me.
I thought that was really important to mention. It's not all about me. I appreciate all of you. <laughs> um, sorry, this isn't that funny and there's no talk about poo. But um, I think it's something that's important and, and that needed to be mentioned. So anyway, love you all. Thank you. Today's a good day, I had a proper shower. Oh mate, did I have a shower with proper running water. Felt great. Washed my beard, got, oh, got all sorts of wet on me. <laughs> and then, I got a bloody Cornetto. Bloody Cornetto. And, oh my God, the best thing of all, did a big poo. And you might think, yeah, big poo mate, what's the, what's, what's the big deal? 10 fucking days mate, without a poo. <laughs> yeah, try going 10 days without a poo and then having a poo. Best fucking poo ever. I was actually asleep when it happened, but I was very excited when I woke up and I was like, oh, I've pooed, I can smell it. <laughs> anyway, now I've got a chocolate cornetto. Mmm. Mmm.